You know, I just want to welcome everybody to the Southwest substation and, uh, you know, on this anniversary date of what's probably one of the darkest days in terms of homicide discoveries in the city of Albuquerque. I remember back when this occurred, I was a graveyard lieutenant uh, in the Southwest Area Command, and I remember uh, just the resources that we had out there every day for what appeared to be months upon months just guarding or being a presence at the scene during the night time to secure it while uh, criminalistics worked uh, the scene during the day. And you know, over the years, I really learned how this had become part of the Southwest Area Command. You know, I was very fortunate during my career, and if there's one area command that, that was more part of my career than any other, it was the Southwest. I was, you know, patrol officer for the Southwest. I was a uh, sergeant in the Southwest, lieutenant. I later became the commander of the Southwest, and I remember when I became the commander and the talks were beginning and we were trying to get some kind of memorial for this. Uh, you know, even back then, you know, our, our city councilor was in the front of everything trying to help make sure that we recognize and that we do something to help remember all the victims. Uh, this is something that will probably never go away, I'll always be part of APD history and hopefully someday we could get some resolution. But one of the commitments I've made to the families, myself and the mayor, is that we want to make sure victims, uh, families always have somewhere to go and that's why we've worked so hard to hire people like Terry uh, who will be there to always update our victims and you know we're really looking back at our homicide cases and looking to see how we could clear them. Our homicide team has had a great month. Uh, we've cleared a number of homicides this month, and we actually have plans beyond that. We want to go back and revisit some of these older cases and get the resources we need to them. It's just a matter of... ...some of these older cases forward, so we'll continue to work uh, you have my commitment as long as I'm chief of police, and I know we have the mayor's commitment as long as he's the mayor and the city councilor's commitment that we will continue uh, to work these cases and that we'll continue to seek just, justice for the families of those that have lost their lives uh, within our city. So thank you for being here, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Rebecca. Okay, and then Mayor Peller is going to be speaking a little bit, and then we're going to toss to Liz Thompson, our investigator. Well, good morning. Uh, we're here, uh, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, APD and the chief and the FBI for continuing to not give up on this case. And especially, uh, we're going to hear from our FBI special agent in charge, but we appreciate uh, the local effort that's being placed on this. And what we want to make sure and do is we'll, we're going to use this anniversary as an occasion to do it. But part of what we have to do as a community with these cases is, number one, support the victims and their fi the, the, the families of the victims. And so as Chief mentioned, that's a large reason why, it's the biggest part of the reason why we are uh, committed to this notion of victims advocacy and the new position we have at Terry Huertas. So that is uh, one piece of what we're doing. The second piece is we are going to continue to ask the public for help. The only way this case is going to get solved is with our community's help or even communities around us that might know something. We need new information on this case. That is what is going to lead to it getting solved. And so we want to remind everyone, if you know anything about this case or have any potential leads, please call Crime Stoppers with that information. Now, we also know that we want justice, right? That's first and foremost, what we're after in this situation. And sometimes we don't have all the answers, but we're not going to quit. And that's also what we want to remind everyone who may have information about this, and also if by chance people who are involved in this are, are listening or know about this. We will eventually solve this case. It might be a long time, just like some of the cases that we solved from the rape kit backlog, but eventually we will find justice. To do that, we just cannot quit. And that's why we're here today reminding everyone we are not going to give up on these women or their families. Now, I would also just mention that part of that is telling their story and honoring what happened in their lives. And we were supposed to be out at the park uh, way out on the Southwest Mesa near where this occurred that memorializes these women and uh, unfortunately this tragedy. 
obviously because of the weather, we're not out there. But I want to remind folks that's an important part as well. We need to tell the story, even though it's a painful story and it's a horrific story. But we will continue to tell the story until we get answers. And so with that, too, we uh, want to hand it over to the investigator. Uh, this is on her plate, among uh, lots of things. But we'll hand it over to investigator Liz Thompson.
Thank you, Liz, and Chief, and Mayor. So like everything else that we do within the city, we do it together, we do it jointly. This investigation has and will continue to be no different. The FBI and I acknowledge the pain and suffering of those relatives who are still going through this and living this on a daily basis. Like I have many conversations with my family, some of which is in Spanish, I will say this in Spanish. Prometo ser la voz de las vidas que hemos perdido. We will continue to be the voice of those that no longer have a voice. I want to acknowledge the Albu Albuquerque Police Department for the fine work that they have done on this investigation. And like it's been said today by Liz and others, we were part of this investigation from the very get-go, and this investigation is far from being done, and therefore our efforts are far from being done. We still regularly receive leads on this investigation and we run every single one of them to ground. The FBI wants to remind the public that we are offering a reward of up to $50,000 and that's just from the FBI piece. Obviously the reward is much higher than that. And we want to find that one key piece of information, no matter how small, that is going to give us the key that's going to break this investigation and finally provide some peace to the victims, some of which are here. Thank you for coming, Victoria. The FBI will do everything we possibly can to bring all our resources to include anything that we perhaps didn't have available to us when we first started this investigation, which includes various technology. Somebody out there has information that could help us solve this case and bring closure to the many families. We're not going to stop until we bring that closure. So now is the time for someone out there that knows a little something to step up and be, and be brave and, and share that information with all of us. So if you know anything, just like it was stated before, call Crime Stoppers or call us, 1-800-CALL-FBI or tips.fbi.gov on the Internet. In a newspaper article that I saw last year, Eleanor Griego, the mother of one of the victims, said, I'm tired and I just want closure. Those girls deserve closure, but I don't want, I don't know if they will ever get it. That's a strong statement. And all I can say to that is the FBI is working every day to honor Eleanor's daughter, Julie, and the other victims by doing everything we can to give them that closure. So at this point, I'll go ahead and turn it over to the Chancellor. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I just want to thank the, the mayor and, and the chief. You know, this has been a long haul for so many in the community. I represent District 3, and this is something that's been one of my priorities um, since, um, since I was elected into office. And as the chief stated, ev even beyond that, if you live in this community, this is something that you have in the back of your mind um, um, throughout the years. So I just really want to start with saying that our thoughts and prayers are um, – to the family and the friends of these young ladies who went missing. I've had the good fortune throughout the years because we did the Memorial Park on the Southwest Mesa of getting to know the families. And as it was stated a minute ago, you know, um, these family members just want closure and um, we hope that there's tips out there or anybody who knows anything can, um, um, can help in, in closing this case so the families can finally um, uh, put their family members to rest at peace. Uh, last year, very interestingly enough, um, the uh, dog who actually found um, the first bone out there, Ruka, passed away, you know, so I w always want to recognize Ruka because if it wasn't for her, um, who knows if this, um, this would have ever um, transpired. So uh, just 
quickly, I just want to say the names of, of the young ladies that were there, you know, uh, one, in one in particular, and, and the picture is there, Doreen Marcus, you know, she has two lovely daughters. One of them, I think they've moved to Texas, and one of them is becoming a doctor, and they just are just such amazing people. So um, just so that you know that all these ladies had a bright future ahead of them, unfortunately, you know, whether it was substance abuse or some other tragedy that's happened in their life, it, it took them down, down the wrong, the wrong wrong path. So, um, you know, Jamie Barella, Monica Candelaria, Victoria Chavez, Virginia Cloven, Sylvania Edwards, Cinnamon Alks, Doreen Marquez, Julia Nieto, Veronica Romero, Evelyn Salazar, um, Michelle Valde Valdez, and her unborn child. You know, we're still, as you all know, the um, Memorial Park was completed a while back, but we're still looking to add some features to the Memorial Park that are gonna continue to bring um, attention and tribute to these wonderful women, so thank you. And um, We can open it up to questions. Liz is available for any questions as well that you guys might have. in the summer of 2021. Um, she had mentioned that there was another search current hit. Liz, can you talk about the search that was done um, last year over the summer? So we received a tip in regards to possible additional burial sites. And so this is a, a tedious process <coughs>
You know, uh, it's great that you asked that question because that was actually what I was stepping up here for. You know, I think that we have to remember we could never give up hope. Uh, there was a case near and dear to my heart, Althea Oakley, that uh, she was a murdered UNM student. We talked about it earlier this year. And uh, I had asked, when I was a lieutenant, I had asked APD to reopen this case and to look into it, and they said there was no answers. When I was a commander again in about 2014, I once again asked that they look into it, and they said there was no answers. In 2018, I asked again if they could look into it, and again, there was no answers. And lo and behold, in 2021, uh, somebody came forward and, and they uh, confessed to the crime, and we're in the process of prosecuting that crime. And they confessed on other crimes that were very old within our community, and the families got closure. So it's never really closed. There's always somebody out there who knows something, and we're hoping that at some point in time, just like... Uh, this individual uh, felt the need that they needed to come forward and get this off their chest, that there's somebody out there that needs to get something off their chest and they need to bring it forward, uh, recognizing that they have family members and if they were in the same position, they would want some kind of justice. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes when people uh, start feel, thinking about the impact that it's having on others and how they would feel as family members, it changes their perception. I mean, we had the, earlier this week, we had an individual who killed a seven-year-old who decided to turn themselves in. And we had a message to that individual at one point, you know, to think about everybody else. So there is somebody out there who has information, and there are grieving families that have been dying for questions for way too long. And we're hoping that these individuals who have this additional information can come forward and uh, give us the information so that we could bring closure to these families. But to the families that are out there, I, I tell each and every one of you, don't ever give up hope. Don't ever stop praying for answers uh, because sometimes those prayers are answered and uh, it's at the most unique time that something comes forward and, and we're able to get, give closure to people. Uh, you know, the Oakleys, I grew up around them. Uh, they had given up hope and over Christmas, uh, they sent me a Christmas card saying that they look forward to when this is completely done that we could go back home to Taos and have... Uh, dinner together and, and, you know, finally celebrate the closure. So sometimes closure does come at the most unique times, and let's hope for the best with this case. But the U Albuquerque Police Department will continue to devote the resources necessary to try to bring closure uh, to this case, which is by far the largest homicide case in the history of this department. Thank you. Are there any more questions? I just have one more question. I'm not sure who this is for, but obviously the city has expanded. It's changed. Um,
saying that these two posters show these women were the women that were identified, and these are the eight women that are still missing that were part of the um, investigation Ida opened into all the missing women. So they still have not been found. Um, and then the last thing, we did um, put a video together on the West Mesa case. Um, we interviewed Ida, who's also an investigator on the case, and the family of Julie Nieto spoke to us. So we'll be sharing that later today on social media and putting out the press release with the posters as well. So thank you guys.